Welcome to Critical Hit, a major spoilers podcast. Thank you so much for downloading and checking us out this week. As promised, another new game. This time we're going to the stars, and we've got a new GM to introduce. Here's Kevin. Kevin, welcome to Critical Hit. Hi, guys. How's it going? Good, good. So uh, tell us uh, whatever you want to share about you so people kind of know who you are, and then uh, introduce this uh, game system that we're going to be playing. Sure. So uh, I am Sam's husband, um, and I've been playing various forms of role-playing games for 25 years. Um, This is going to be my first time running Starfinder, and it's my first time on a podcast. So here's hoping it goes well. Uh, but, um, I am really excited about this system. It's, uh, similar to Pathfinder, uh, you know, one of the big, big ones, um, in, but it's just slightly different in a whole bunch of ways. Uh, it's, uh, sci-fi fantasy, um, and, you know, it's got references from, uh, Firefly to Star Wars to Cowboy Bebop and, um, it's got a whole list of species and magic and all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I'm very interested to see how this plays because um, goblins in space. Yeah, space goblins space will goblins. definitely be making mm. an appearance. Yeah, for all sure. Right. So, um, Strongly considered playing one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right, uh, uh, Kevin, we are going to turn it over to you and let you uh, just take off and, and uh, see where we go this week. Okay. That sounds good. So, uh, Rodrigo and Sam, uh, your two characters uh, are stationed together, uh, living in on Absalom Station, uh, which is the beating heart of the intergalactic vascular system of travel and trade, as well as the center of government and the location of many corporate headquarters for the Pack World's solar system. So specifically, you two are in the Spire uh, on Absalon Station, where you've managed to secure uh, temporary accommodations in a region called Pipe Town. Uh, Pipe Town is a maze of millions of conveyors, gauges, and tubes, circuits, and panels, and ducts. Uh, And it's interspersed with occupied hammocks uh, and deconstructed plastic crates that form the makeshift walls for overpacked communities of workers that call this labyrinth home. Uh, As you guys are resting, a a mischief of Yasoki pups clamors uh, through the conduits alongside an ingratitude of human children scampering through the cylinders. (laughs) Oh, yeah. If you guys like collective nouns, you're in for a treat. Uh, So you two have a set of bunks made from the shell casings of enormous spent munitions that have been harvested from some long forgotten space battle. Uh, And you have your meager possessions ready to go, uh, waiting for just this moment. Your comlinks uh, at the same time make their respective noises and vibrations when you both receive a message. Uh, Extreme Infosphere Productions graciously invites you, and then there's a moment of uh, discord when one says, Vangi, and the other says, Hecubino, to participate in the 27th rotation sequence of Drifters. Your team submission is due in eight hours. Please meet your media liaison, Crystal Wiles, at Extreme Headquarters on Level 9 of the Blue Rise Tower on Absalom Station in three hours. You're welcome for this opportunity. So, uh, what do you two do? I jump out of my bunk and say, It's the big time! (laughs) They couldn't have given us more time? It's the big time. Let's go. All right. She, like, grabs just, like, a pile of of, uh, weapons. Yeah, do you want, like, character descriptions now or later or... Uh, why don't we go ahead and introduce the characters as they appear? So why don't you describe yourselves? Sure. So uh, jumping out of a hammock is a giant lizard woman. Um, uh, Vangi is a Vesk, um, which she's about seven feet tall and, I don't know, a few hundred pounds. Um, she's like really broad shouldered um, and is slapping. She had been 
uh, like a sleep and just kind of like a mus- basically like a muscle shirt and like uh, like whatever tight like spandexy artificial fabric pants and uh, is slapping on these like giant plates of uh, ceramic armor and uh, hauling a uh, big uh, metal pike and then also a flamethrower um, over her shoulder um, in a backpack and she's like using her uh, big tail to grab things just as much as she uses her hands um, she has turquoise scales uh, augmented with a little bit of uh, violet um, so like a little violet around the jaw and like almost like kind of starburst shapes around her eyes that go up to uh, violet horns on the top of her head that go down her back and onto the tip of the tail very cool uh, so Rodrigo why don't you describe your character okay. uh my character, Hecubino, is a human male. Uh, he's probably about 5'8", um, tops. Uh, he's skinny, uh, but in good shape for a skinny guy. Um, he's got uh, his, uh, his skin is light brown. His head is completely shaven. Um, he's got some uh thick eyebrows and like kind of generally big features he's got big eyes a big nose a big mouth big ears that stick out uh probably wouldn't stick out as much if he wasn't bald but he is um and uh he is currently trying to simultaneously um jump into a a suit of uh, carbon armor. So basically just a tight suit of uh, um, like self uh, like replicating carbon nanite things uh, while also trying to uh, apply some eyeliner uh, holding like a a hand mirror, uh, which more than likely is itself just a polished municipal, like also like a polished shell. And uh, while he's doing that, uh, he'll say, "Do we should we do we need to take all these weapons? Are they gonna are they Who gonna knows? freak out if we show up?" I'm, I'm not expecting to come back here. We were like, what three hours before check in, eight hours before we're meeting the crew. Oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. No no, no. let's take everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys pick up uh, your assorted gear. Anything notable that you're carrying? Um, I am carrying uh, a. Well, definitely a backpack that's been packed with a bunch of stuff, but um, I've got a uh, an arc pistol, so basically a um, like a very very serious looking taser um, that actually ends in like like these two little prongs. Probably has like a safety yellow like uh, border around them. Um, uh, but uh, other than that, probably not. Yeah. I mean, Maggie's like pulling out a little hygiene kit, basically just like spraying herself with some kind of cleanliness spray and then spraying uh, uh, Hecubino with it as well. Um, and yeah, the I guess probably like, I, I mean, besides the giant weapons um, that seems to be, she's also got like a small, small uh, hammer um, and like at the top of the hammer is like a big bubble. A big oh, bubble. They, I think I think they also have these matching um, like things that hook onto their backs that look like you could probably have a projector going on there. Ah, nice. Okay, cool. Uh, so you guys grab all of your stuff and uh, you basically clean out your bunks, which is fine. These were temporary accommodations, and uh, you start making your way through Pipe Town. Uh, you can make it um, pretty much without incident to the closest. Uh, hyperrail or or grav train station uh so you know you you're presumably both bundles of nerves and really excited and talking to each other but uh you go to uh scan your absalom rail passes and wouldn't you know it you just ran out of credits on them uh so a throng of would-be passengers push past you uh, while you go to reload your passes at a nearby terminal uh how many credits do each of you have left 30 70 nice okay so technically this trip 
uh, would likely only cost you one credit, um, but they only let you buy these passes in bundles of 25. Well, oh, I'll just harsh. slap down 25 and we can keep, is this, this, this one of those places where they lock you out when you scan the card once? Yeah, I'm guessing uh, we just need to have our own pass. Yeah, they, they, they certainly should. Um, you're not you're not positive how it works here. All right. Yeah, well, we'll just, we'll just get our own. All right. Okay. Uh, while you're at the uh, terminal, a trio of elderly dwarves uh, wearing old asteroid mining gear and uh, carrying, like, rods with, like, a nylon mini satchel attached, basically, you know, one of the, the hobo sticks. Um, a bindle. Yeah, bindle. Uh, approach you at the station terminal. And uh, one of them approaches and says, Oh, there, strangers. Do you have a minute for some old miners? Uh, 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 we have exactly one schedule. minute. Uh, yeah, you, you have, you have like, one minute. Uh, I'm yeah, hit me on timer. What's up? I'm Brenson. Uh, this is Sirius, and that there is Duthane. We're trying to get to our grandchildren out in the ring at Drifter's End. We sure would appreciate it if you cover our grav train fare. Well, you're in luck, old timers, because we have multi-passes, so if you can swipe through with us. Ah, thank you so much. And they uh, bundle up their stuff and get ready to follow you onto the grav train. So you guys scan through, um, and then you just like hand your passes back to them, or what do you do? Or do you scan them in first? Yeah, yeah I'll just scan uh, them in first, since they're probably right. slower than us. Cool. Because we can jump the turnstile <laughs> if it comes to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, you let them all through, um, and you let yourselves through. Evidently, it doesn't have that kind of security to prevent multi-scanning. Uh, um, and you're able to cram aboard the grab train just in time. Uh, it's full of people, just like Epsilon Station in general. It's just full of uh, all sorts of different species from around the galaxy. You see um, a few other Vesk on board. Uh, you see some Sheeran. Uh, you see um, what appears to be an elf, probably in uh, like a Castravel, another nearby planet in the Pact Worlds uh, attire. Um, and then a bunch of humans as well. Um, the uh, Doors close emphatically right behind you, and uh, you're you're basically pushed up against the three dwarves that you let on, uh, Brenson, Sirius, and Duthane. So um, uh, they they nod and grin at you, and uh, they say, "So, what where are you all up to?" Beggy uh, just kind of like looks at Hecubino with a big grin on her face. Oh, we're uh. We're off to be on a show, sort of. Well, we got a we got a meeting with like a liaison person. We've got an audition. Yeah. Oh, hitting the big time, are you? Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> the three of us, we've been asteroid miners out in the diaspora for decades. We are always trying to hit the big time. Maybe we've got one last shot in us, but. Since you have a bit before you get to your station, let me tell you about our our adventures. And then they proceed to talk between the three of them. By the way, the three of them look very similar. Um, they, one's got gray hair, one's got red hair, one's got dark brown hair. But they otherwise could be tri triplets. Um, and they just continuously, uh, in that same accent... Uh, tell you about asteroid mining in the diaspora. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you guys see the uh, the stop that you'll need to get off at for Blue Rise Tower, um, and uh, the grab train pulls up. Well, uh, pleasure meeting you. Enjoy your time with your grandkids. Good luck in the mines. This is us. If you ever need of help out in the diaspora, here's our comm keys. And they send you like little personal messages at uh, close distance. You never know when you'll need a friend or three in, out in this crazy galaxy. 
Thanks, guys. Oh. That'll probably never happen, but we appreciate it. Bye. Watch Drifters! <laughs> All right. You guys duck out of the grab train and run up uh, the escalator uh, to what you know is the the main ring uh of absalom station and onto a packed uh thoroughfare of pedestrian traffic uh and you can see in the uh distance uh a bright uh cobalt blue tower of glass um that is assuredly your destination uh so you run off um towards it it it, because you had to take, uh, you know, public transit, it's taken you a little while. Um, there, you could have caught a uh, a uh, robo taxi, but they don't go to uh, Pipe Town. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah we'll, just... we'll just like relentlessly kind of like push through people, like using her bulk and like also like kind of like navigating Hecubino by like the shoulders to to move a path for him. Cool. Um, well, you come close to blows with. Uh, a a fellow Vesk, um, but uh, you're you're able to brush past them uh, fast enough, and uh, you make it to the entranceway of Blue Rise Tower. Um, there, as you as you approach, you can see that it's uh, got some sort of energy field uh, around it um, in a a golden grid pattern that, uh, that isn't really visible until you're, you're very close. Um, and the, uh, there's an entrance way, um, which is just the, the cobalt glass, uh, sliding open, uh, seamlessly. Um, and, uh, there's an attendant, uh, in a blue uniform, uh, waiting with a data pad in hand. It is a uh, Lashunta and male, and he uh, he is tall and light green, blue skinned, and he uh, looks up inquisitively uh, as you approach. I check my com for like all like if there were like any additional instructions. Uh yeah. So you have your on the uh, the little. Um, uh, message you received, there is an encrypted attachment. And it's like, invitations? Uh, oh, here. And I- I'll yeah. click it over. And I'll look over his and unblowed my, uh, mine own as well. Very well. Step in for decontamination. Step in. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you step in and it's a uh, all white room um, with basically it's com- almost entirely featureless, um, but there is another door. Uh, the crystal uh, glass slides shut, um, and uh, as soon as it does, um, it, the Lashenta does not follow you in. It's just the two of you, and you get um, momentarily startled as a light misting of some chemical smell. Uh, smelling product uh, gets spritzed all over you and then uh, like a powerful hit, a blow dryer basically uh, gets uh, blown on you from uh, vent ducts in the ceiling. And then shunk, the door opposite uh, the way in opens. Hey, did that mess up my makeup? I'll inspect it. No, nope, still good. Okay. It's totally running, and but it makes him look more badass. Sweet. Uh, so uh, you uh, walk through the door, and um, uh, it's it's a whole different world in here. There's a uh, information desk, a little kiosk, and there's tube lift elevators um, that you can press uh, the little buttons, and that there's a enormous um screen showing you all of the different uh places of business this seems to be some um, major corporate uh headquarters location can we tell like which corporation or is it multiple ones uh well there's there's several um uh but you know that the one you're looking for is uh x stream infosphere productions that is spelled 
x-stream like streaming service. Nice. Cool. Then yeah, I'll check the directory for Crystal Wiles and or Xtreme Infosphere Productions. Yep. They're on level nine. So you guys can take the turbo lift and uh, as you uh, it's playing like little space jazz music and space music. yep. Uh, you can lock eyes with each other once more in the turbo lift um, super excitedly. And then the lift doors open and you're in the lobby of Xtreme Infosphere Productions, which has a variety of Infosphere shows, but uh, Drifters, the intergalactic hit sensation uh, that features daring space chases and planetary amazing races uh, against all sorts of obstacles and monsters. Uh, You see uh, clips from that, including the most famous winners and teams and moments are just being uh, blasted at you through a variety of media, including little VR pop-ups. Is there like a, someone to check in with here? Yeah, you have to kind of blow past all of this media overload for a moment. And then, uh, sure enough, there's uh, a media uh, attendant waiting for you. It seems uh, to be a shimmering, uh, which is a type of uh, species that's made out of crystal. She is uh, like a brilliant emerald in color. And she's lounging on some uh, space uh, chair, and mm-hmm. she's space just chair. in, some, yep, uh, in some sort of shimmery gauze-like fabric that constantly shifts its patterns and appearance, looking like she's wearing a rainbow hitting a waterfall. She looks up. Oh, are you... Uh, and Banking and Hecubino, like, we're here to see Crystal Wiles. Ah, uh, that's me. A pleasure. And she sort of holds out uh, daintily a uh, crystal sharded hand. I take it. Mm. And uh, she is constantly on a data pad, and uh, she briefly looks up at you um, and gives you a quick... Uh, appraising stare and then goes back to the data pad all right this way and she sits you down in she like takes you through a hallway in uh the extreme productions section and uh, she sits you down in a room with uh just the two of you some chairs uh a little uh white table and she brings in a floating sphere of metal and this floating sphere is matthew hello i am a quantum enhanced titanium shell neurological and heuristic system for education and instruction but please call me quentin okay hey, uh, quentin, hi quentin up? i'm bangy uh what does quentin Thanks. look like matthew Quentin looks like a floating sphere. Uh, if if steel is still a thing, you might say brushed steel. Uh, at the point that he begins to speak, uh, sort of an LED display shows a face, or at least a, a rudimentary sort of emoji face, that vaguely matches what he's saying and definitely has a friendly expression and just sort of floats in space. The best part is, if they're on opposite sides, he actually has a face on both sides to speak directly to each of them. Oh, that's helpful. Um, some, I, I, I'm trying to figure out size. I'm, I'm, I can't find a size comparison. It's like somewhere between a medicine ball and a small yoga ball. So, sure. what what size category are you? Medium. So, what would that be? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Quentin here will be our. Well, he's my assistant. Assistant to the assistant producer, that is. And uh, he'll be doing filming services for us. Great. Why don't you have a seat and tell me a little bit about yourselves and 
why you think you should be the next team on Drifters. She again, Camera on. she says all of these things very, very politely, but she is still transfixed with her data pad. Mm-hmm. Vengi sits down very daintily with like the air of someone who has crushed a lot of furniture in her day and but like still makes like a hideous scraping noise as she does so. Yeah. Uh, Hecubino sits down and then immediately springs to his feet and says, all right, here's the deal. We're the most emphatic, most electric new team to ever hit the Danger Ray circuit. All right. We grew up in the place where these races originate, Akaton. And not only that, but I don't know if you heard about this, but we have already made a splash in the circuit. That is why we would be the number one team to join Drifters this season. Uh, so when you stood up, she her her eyes did uh, light on you as she is drawn to motion. And then as you continue on, she starts nodding. Yes, yes. Something with um, the Rusty Dragon, was it? Yeah, Team Rust Dragon. <laughs> they have to rebuild because of us. If you want chaos and excitement, we're your team. Well, wouldn't you know, we just so happen to have a slot available. All right, what should I put down for the team name? Right, we're going we're gonna to go with, we're going to... Um, she, like, she nods emphatically. Okay. We're going to go with uh, Team Lizard Brain. Yeah! All right, He's let me... the brain, uh, and I'm the lizard. We'll do a pose. Yep, she, like, flexes. <laughs> hmm... I get it. Hmm. All right. Well, let me run that through the InfoSphere Connections database and be sure it's not trademarked or that it has a good uh, presence already. But I think we can uh, focus group that up and we should be able to work out with it. Uh, That's just fine. Uh, Why don't the two of you and I suppose Quentin, if you're ready, uh, take a position. And um, uh, we have some candidates that uh, we'd like to introduce you to for your team. Wow, already? Yeah, no, that's great. Yes, we are to on meet them. We're team players. <laughs> that's good to hear. Hopefully better team players with your new team than your last team, but good to hear. Well, we technically were part of Team Rust Dragon. I mean, we were the crew. You know what? It's all good. We're, we're ready to play. All right, that's that's just great. That's just wonderful. All right. So, yeah, we are on a tight production schedule. So, like I said in my message, uh, we're going to have to have a team selected here within the next, oh, it looks like four hours. So, you know, we do have people on standby that have been waiting for these invitations. So, we're just going to go through as many auditions as we can, and then you guys get full freedom from the people who've auditioned to select. Sound good? Great. And uh, with that, you guys can take your seats, although not Quentin, because he is hovering. Uh, has Matthew, has Quentin turned on his camera mode? Yes. Cool. Um, let me know if you do any uh, asides to the recording or if you wish to change focus and zoom in on somebody, for instance. Uh, and uh, then you guys get ready for your uh, first audition, which will be Steven. Over the shoulder shot of the door. <laughs> Whose shoulder? Both shoulders. Whose shoulder? Bangy he is just and a Hecubino. shoulder. I'm sorry, so, whose shoulder? <laughs> over the shoulder of the two characters. Oh. I have no shoulders. I am the camera. No, I know. That's why I was wondering. Who's over the shoulder were you doing? I'm behind them, shooting across them. So that you can see the door, so that you can see them in the foreground, and as someone enters, it will be this dramatic moment. <laughs> dun, Brought dun, dun. to you by Omnicorp. We already own that. So the door walks open, or opens up, and in walks um, someone about six foot tall, very generic looking person, right? Um, it's pretty clear right away that... This person is probably an android. Uh, he is wearing a generic blue like coverall. Uh, strapped to his his uh, leg is a is a pistol, and he has a like a sling backpack um, over his his shoulder, which probably contains all sorts of really cool computery type things that uh, only androids would would uh, would would need to have. 
Um, he looks at the door as it opens, steps through. He- hello. Hey, come on in. Yes. Um, Have a seat. Tell the sphere your name. Uh, my name is 785-727-1938-808, but you can call me Bob Newman. That's good, because I would not remember that sequence of numbers. Yes, that's that's fine. That's why many of us have chosen uh, names that are more easy, easily pronounceable to other species and peoples. I'm a pilot. Okay. Oh, you're a pilot. That's great. Um, what uh, sort of crafts do you have experience with? I think you would call them generic spacecraft. This would technically be my first big space adventure. That's great. Oh. That's great. Probably don't have any bad habits. Do you have any bad habits? No. Why do you want to be on drifters? I, I think many people know that our kind are raised into indentured servitude on birth, and we have to pay our way to get out of out of that so we can go and do our own, own thing. Uh, and uh, in order to do that, we need money. Uh, working on the planet, it could take many generations for us to work our way out of that debt. And by being on a show like this, I can potentially earn a lot of money and get out of that that debt faster. It takes a lot a to make hustler. us. hustler. I like it. I'm a pilot. A pilot yeah, sounds hustler. Like, sounds compelling. Thank you. Uh, one quick follow-up on that. Now, you say you're indentured to your manufacturer. Now, they don't have the rights to your likeness, I assume. Oh, no, we are... That's just great. That's great. Good. She's back to her data pad. All right. All right, Bob, one last question. Uh Uh-huh. Who's the money? Who's the money? Yeah, who's the money? You are? I'm the money. You are the money. Jump on the table and be like, I'm the money. I'm the money. I'm the money. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Money. Get into it, Bob. Nice to meet you, Mr. Money. He's the money! You are the money! Yeah! All right, I've seen all I need to see. Uh, okay, you will call me? I look at Quentin. Yes. Oh, okay. And I kind of turn around and step up to the door, and it doesn't quite open first, and then I have to step towards it again, and then it finally opens, and then I walk through, and it closes behind me. <laughs> nice Excellent. You, Bob. I like them. I think he has a, a good, awkward energy. Yeah, he's not going to take any, like camera attention off us that's for sure that's true and he will provide the necessary piloting skills oh yeah there's that yeah we can spin him into some sort of emo tragic character i i think we can work with that yeah and you know I, i've been practicing my piloting in case uh he turns out to not be any good what was the sequence of numbers again yeah 75-727-1939-808 <laughs> I assume you got it that time. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> All right, great. <clears throat> I'm with you. Next up, uh the door opens again and uh this time uh coming into the room floating is a massive brain person with a almost vestigial body uh, that's significantly atrophied from lack of use, but the its head is just an enormous brain. Uh, is it so a contemplative? It is a contemplative. Uh, so at least the two of you, uh, Hecubino and Vangi, have seen contemplatives before on Akaton. Uh, Quentin, you might be familiar with this because you've encountered a lot of different uh, peoples and species over your time. Why don't you give me a culture check? Checking. Culture. Class bonus. Three. Ability modifier. Zero. So I'm just rolling a d20. Roll a d20. That's right. All right. Remember, kids, if you hear me laugh, that's all out of character. Quentin is very distracted and rolls a three. (laughs) All right. So Quentin doesn't really know uh, exactly what this thing is or what its deal is. Uh, it's clearly just a giant floating brain person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had to pull out to frame him properly and thus was distracted for a moment. All yeah, right. Difficult to frame. Difficult to frame. Yeah, a brain. He had, to, had, to, had to take the camera wider and also taller. And uh, you hear something in all of your minds. Uh, 
as it communicates telepathically uh, and it says it broadcasts very loudly i am talos oh, i hear hi, i am talos yes yes i hear this is team lizard brain preliminary copy brand searches seem to approve that name yeah that's right you're you're from Akaton? Yes, yes, of course. But more importantly, I can be the brain of Team Lizard Brain. Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but uh, I'm already the brain of Team Lizard Brain. But we do need a cute one. Do you uh, think you can grow? Do you think you can uh, maybe grow some sideburns? Are you mocking my appearance? I am a powerful psychic. I have vast mental abilities that dwarf your. I, Whatever you are, human mind, you call yourself a brain? No, truly, I can be a leader that, for this team. I can provide guidance. I can be the captain. And I will undoubtedly be the smartest member of the team. Plus, I, my vast psychic abilities. And I'll, I will be the face, naturally. I'll turn to Vang as like, I think that's a no on the sideburns. Uh, we, we also have a opportunity for... Um, a per, maybe a maybe a foil like maybe you could just like that could be your shtick like you're trying to constantly take over the team and like you and uh uh Hecubino could like fight about it a lot yeah hmm. maybe we can give you a mustache yeah how do you feel about mustaches i prefer accoutrement that i can wear psychically such as a crown like a little one that like floats right over your head Yes. Brown. Right, we'll, we'll I mean, we're kind of going for one. a more like uh, rough and tumble kind of look. I don't know that a crown would work. How about like a helmet with a spike on it? Hmm. I think that one of the first orders of team business, it floats over to uh, Vangi, um, would be to be sure that this human knows his place. I will accept him as a as his mentor. Oh, that's cute. She like kind of like gives him like a brain noogie. Ah, ah, my lobes. No, no, I like this guy. Um, yeah, we'll definitely keep you in mind. <laughs> I see what you did there. Excellent. I eagerly an- anticipate your acceptance of my rule. I'm sorry. I mean, stardom. And okay, he thank you. F- don't he don't let the out. door hit you in the medulla oblongata. All right. The uh, next creature to approach, I will let Rob describe. So it'll walk a uh, bulky, uh, bulky, lumbering, like mechanical shell. I think like a spiral snail shell, not one of the pointed ones, but just a regular round shell. Uh, with like a Nautilus. Yes, Nautilus. Nautilus is the one I'm thinking of. Okay. Can't see into it just yet, but everything on it is, there looks like drawers, hinges, lights, a number of random things on the shell, uh, and a, uh, a very friendly, uh, hello, is this the right place? Uh, if is you're it... here for the Drifters audition, it is? Yes. Team Lizard Brain, I was told? That's us! Yeah, way Hi. to get the word out, Quentin. Hi. Hi, I'm the doctor. We're the doctor. Uh... uh... So are you like, like some sort of medic? like a snail robot or something? Oh, uh, and out of the front of the shell, a kind of uh, green and blue limb reaches out and creates a face. Uh, no, I am. We are Recreci. Describe this face. A uh, very, very basic. Uh, it's it's trying to mimic the human face, but is clearly not great at it. <laughs> what is it is made it ins- out of? Uh, little bits of coral. Oh. Uh, and if you look closely, everything looks like it's slightly moving and pieces or it adjusts slowly trying to, uh, as it tries to mimic what it sees a little bit closer. Quentin zooms in and gives it a super that says Recreci, spelling it carefully. Wait, is that your name or your Species. Species. We are Amu. Recreci oh. is crossed out, and the super now says Amu. <laughs> nice to meet you, Amu. Don't think I've ever met a Recreci. Uh, we haven't been exploring for long, and that's why I want to do this. Exposure. Get it? Yeah. Okay. Mm, let's see. So you say you're a medic, right? Wait, wait. I got one for this one. I got one for this one. Okay. All okay. right. All right. So one of us 
has been paralyzed and implanted by a zill. The zill is in the process of phasing out into the ethereal plane. What do you do? Apologize to the other one for uh, seeing their friend go away. I see. So you don't try to, like, save the person who's been implanted by eggs before they burst oh, out of oh, their eggs. chest? Just the eggs. I thought you said it was a zill. It's, if it's already hatched, it's too late. Oh, no. Well, you know, they lay their lay, lay eggs inside of you, and then they take you away to the ethereal plane to, like, the eggs can hatch on the from your insides and eat you on the way out. Yeah, that's that's. I, you said the azil was in there. No, the eggs. Oh, that's a simple surgery. Uh, though mm. no anesthetic, because you have to be able to feel uh, what's going on in order to let me know, let us know what still is in there. Well, you point at the uh, at, what a vesk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know, and don't get anesthetic. Uh, humans do. Yeah, humans do. Huh. I didn't even know that. You, you, your species feels your internals a lot more sensitively than, a, or humans don't feel their internals all that as sensitively. So there's no point in uh, not anesthetizing them. Oh, I like, didn't know that. Pats her stomach. Learn something new every day. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, I like, I like it. He's got like a real horrifying vibe. Yeah. I think we could use and that. And he could like very in, tell us very horrifying things about eggs. <laughs> We've been meaning to get into the aquatic market. It's very deep. <laughs> oh, oh, snap. Oh. oh, producer jokes. All right. Well, uh, and why? Okay. Wait, you want to expose? You want to explore? Um, any other questions? Uh, you know that this type of exploration involves a lot of people shooting at you, right? And uh, maybe... Maybe like some sort of monster trying to eat you or trying to get out of the wreckage of a spaceship. Uh, well, cl- uh, they'll cling on the shell. Uh, I'm not worried about damage. This thing is solid. Our people are very good at uh, have have figured out how to uh, leave the depths safely. Okay. All right. Cryptic. I like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Recreechy um, language download complete. A man of mystery. <laughs> Quentin. So uh, you made a that that is say Quentin made a good approximation of all of the clicking and uh, sounds that come from the uh, motions that Recreci make, um, and uh, you might have had to use a couple of um, some of your little arm gadgets, Quentin, to to <laughs> get the visuals across uh, to mm. communicate in Recreci. That is true. What did you say? Uh, I said, hello, I am a quantum-enhanced titanium shell neurological and heuristic system for education and instruction. But please call me Quentin. I'm really wondering how you got across that uh, titanium neurological thing in Recreci. Well, there were actually several small extensions that came out and literally spelled it. There you go. Like when you have one of those fans that has a lighted message that goes across it. Several small extensions came out and started spinning, and then an LED display had titanium, as well as heuristic, strangely enough. I would be worried if the species of our medic doesn't have the word neurological in it. That's fair. Mm. That's fair. <laughs> Weirdly, it doesn't have education. Uh, we don't actually have neurological in it. Oh. Do you not have brains? Uh, I think they're mollusks, aren't they? They'll put a hand sure, out but and they're kind sentient. of or a, an appendage out and kind of wave it around and show that uh, it comes apart willy nilly. Gross. There's about four million three hundred and seventy two thousand one hundred and sixty three of us right now. Oh, wait, wait, in wait, there? Wait, 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 wait. So you're like a collective? Yes. Cool. Just just one second. Hey, uh. But we're paying them as an individual, right? I don't want to split. I don't want to have to split this a million one hundred and however many times he just said. Yeah, right, right. You got one paycheck. You guys can split it as far as you feel see fit. Oh, we only need the one paycheck. Great. Oh, great. Well, thanks for coming. Are we friends now? Uh, yes. Definitely. We, Yay. We we will contact at least one of you. <laughs> you guys can fight uh, over who is our best friend. Oh, we are right. one mind. So educational. Get out of here. 
<laughs> the door is open, and uh, you are uh, almost bumped into uh, their Amu by a, a very large creature, much larger even than Vangi, a Trox. Uh, now, a Trox looks... Uh, I'm trying to think of how to describe this. It stands about 10 feet tall. Uh, It's covered in uh, both natural plated armor. It's got these two enormous back spikes. It has um, uh, exoskeleton, kind of three enormous talons. Uh, It's got little side arms built into its abdomen. Um, The thing must weigh... 600 700 pounds easily and it has uh fearsome mandibles uh, along with glowing red eyes oh, I am oh. Kex. what do we have here like, yeah whoa hi greetings i am kex pleased to meet you kex what brings you to uh this audition i wish to join your team uh, what would you say your area of expertise is i have studied the secrets of the cosmos with the great Kasathan Solarians, and I will bring the power of the sun and gravity. I always wanted to uh, hang out with a Solarian and heard interesting things. Yes. I am proficient in many weapons. I leave no foes standing beyond me. I am an unstoppable force and an immovable object. Oh. I am Kex. Okay, well, I got I got a question for you. Uh, what would others say is your least worst strength? <laughs> I do not understand the question, but I have meditated long and perfected myself into a being of pure cosmic energy. Mm-hmm. And then he, uh, his like eyes grow golden, and he uh, conjures a massive. Uh, weapon of golden light. Oh. It's a it's, it's melee. It almost looks like a like a double headed axe, um, but uh, again made of light. And he starts swinging it around and doing these fancy you know baton twirling moves. Um, and then about halfway through his routine, um, he stops, and you hear a weird sound it almost sounds like he's whistling it's just or, or it's like and there's a uh like something coming from him does it smell bad <laughs> oh my goodness oh god it smells terrible it smells horrible um this it, it, it's a it's an extremely potent almost visceral oh oh yeah your eyes are watering <laughs> Ah, um, Quentin, you're lucky you don't have a nose. Uh, I have 17 what? sensors I'm sorry, that allow me but, to tell um, this noxious gas. Is that is that a Solarian thing? Or I happen uh, to be molting right now. That is the molting fumes. Oh, I see. How long is that going to last? No more than 17 weeks. Uh, I'm not... Hey, you know what? Uh, I think we've gotten all the information we need, mm. so uh, we will be in touch. Very well. I look forward to defending you from your many foes. Yeah. Nice. Uh, it, yeah, that's going to take some sort of industrial strength uh, air <laughs> freshener. Um, Crystal gets up and leaves the room to go get this whole thing uh, ventilated. She like as uh, Crystal leaves. She like like that's not like some kind of like we're not gonna get like I don't know in trouble for not hiring him while he's molting. Uh, I don't know. I can't. It's like it's like somebody it's like somebody put chili peppers directly in my lungs. Uh, it it's like somebody farted inside my spacesuit. Yeah, it's like. Uh, you know when, like, uh, you know when, like, a space gas supposedly like flays your soul. That this smells like that should feel like. Yeah, 
is like that paralyzing stench of the grave that cuts you to the absolute core. Yeah, except like with like egg salad on top. Yeah. That's been like left out for a week. I will classify Kex under maybe. Yeah, that's yeah, a I mean, the, maybe. The axe was pretty cool. Yeah. Not going to lie. Okay. Uh, so after a few minutes of, uh, you know, refreshing the room's oxygen and getting some eye drops and this and so forth, uh, you can get a new audition, which is a Yusuke. Brian. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, basically, uh, walks in, seems to be a, a small round mound of uh, scaly hide and bone spurs, uh, seemingly being worn by the small Yosoki creature. Uh, he's kind of chubby, a little bit more hamsterish looking than rat. Uh, gray fur, uh, lighter around the muzzle, light gray overall, but uh, with uh, dark gray to black spots, uh, including a uh, dark patch of fur around uh, his right eye and uh, he walks up and uh, basically says uh, I'm here for the audition welcome welcome so why have you decided to audition for drifters uh, whatever will get me out of this uh, hunk of metal and around the world around the space mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What? so okay so what's your name I am Skritic. Oh. That's cool. Uh, what would you say your area of expertise is? Mine is survival. Where I... do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> Anywhere but here, hopefully. Mm, I feel that we've been uh, we've been basically living on, uh, I think, underneath a cistern this whole time. So I get what you're saying. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, if. Uh, you need someone who can fill pretty much any position. I am very adaptable. I will help it on the ship, but uh, once uh, you get to the dirt side challenges here on the show, I will absolutely be your key to victory in those situations. Wow. Wow. I'm, gl- I'm glad you're familiar with the show. I kinda... uh, I've seen the episodes. Yeah, I kind of feel like we've gotten a few, few people coming through here who kind of, they're new to this. Looks like you're... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like you've got some experience. Now, I got a question for you. Yeah. If a fully loaded Corvette leaves Akaton for Aox at 7.45 pack standard time, traveling at a subdrift speed, while a passenger shuttle leaves Aox for Akaton at the same speed at 4.11 p.m., when are they most likely to get jumped by pirates? <laughs> as soon as they're as far as away from any sort of civilized land, that's when they're going to get jumped. I mean, that's what I got. We would also have accepted 4.7 light years. <laughs> well, I'm not the most uh, mathy person, but I'll take your word for it. I like, I like lean back. I'm like, Pangy. Yeah. This guy kind of looks like he would kill us in our sleep. Yeah. Would you kill us I, in our sleep? <laughs> uh, not typically. But, but, but on occasion. <laughs> I think it'd have to wrong me in some pretty heinous way for me to have to resort to those measures. Define wronging you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess if you uh, dump me on some planet and make me have to fend for myself again for some three horrid years, and if I ever come back to this ship and find you again, then uh, you might have to worry. Okay. All right. All right. So, like, last beer, like, taking the last beer, not not bad enough. <laughs> no, you can have what beer you want. Okay, all right. No, I like this. I, you know, I think he's got a real, uh... Brings up, like, grit. Yeah. He's got lots of grit. Like, I can literally see it. Yeah, <laughs> in, like, the fur. Yeah. I yeah, that's, have the that's best definitely going around. in the I'm big sorry. baby pile. Oh, no, don't apologize. You're great. You got. You already have a great look. I don't think if we if you get in this team, we're not going to have to work on you at all. Um, well, sounds good. All right. Well, uh, everybody's got your information, so uh, yeah, we'll call you. We'll call you when, if and when you know, you know, uh, hmm. corporate. Yeah, and fair enough. Uh, hope to be uh, sailing with you. All right. Nice meeting you. Yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. All right. And then there's one more 
uh, candidate ready to audition, a Sheeran, uh, a bright blue-green bug person with uh, really beautiful antenna and kind of shimmery purple eyes and uh, dressed in you know, everyday clothes, but you note that uh, she has tons of pouches and uh, pockets, and uh, it seems like she's wearing layers. She's got a cool vest underneath, and she's got little weapons stashed away, and she cheerfully approaches and twitches her antenna at you and says, uh, Hi, hi, Is it, it, it's not too late to audition, right? No, I think you got oh. it just under the wire. Yeah. Oh, great, great, great. Uh, my name's Halicon, and I, all I want to do is help you guys. That's great. How would you uh, help us? Well, um, I've been training as a mechanic. I've been backup training as a pilot. I hold uh, several PhDs in in life and physical sciences. Um, I'm uh, you know, I, I'm very clean. I know how to cook. Um, and I'll really do whatever you tell me to do. I just am wow. so happy to be here. Wow. You sound grossly overqualified. Oh, oh no! Don't worry about me. I can also handle myself in a fight. Wow, that's. Good. She that's a, pulls that's out impressive. a uh, sniper rifle, doing which you had no idea she could be. Uh, she could have underneath that cloak, but yeah, ah. I'm actually a crack shot too. Wow! Wow! I I see. Uh, well, what would you say is your greatest weakness? Um, I don't really like the spotlight for myself. I really just want to help my companions. Wow! 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 Um, excuse me. Um. <laughs> And uh, sh- her her coloration starts to turn more purple. Uh, yes. Um, uh, and uh, around her mouth, uh, her little mandibles are, are freaking out. I don't suppose. Um, what's there happen to be a? Um, uh, and she she collapses to to her two knees. A uh, uh, multi trucks in this room. Oh no. And- she starts uh, spewing out some uh, green acidic goo on the floor. Uh, uh, oh, no, hi, I'm Crystal, still here. Do you have, like, Get a medic. someone on call? Medic, medic. medic? <laughs> All right. So we'll hard cut to a few minutes later when a, a medic team has been called uh, and uh, Halicon is on a stretcher. They've stabilized her, and she's got uh, a Sheeran, you know, gas mask on, feeding her oxygen. And uh, Crystal says, oh, yeah, uh, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. Okay, that's going to be a no. Oh, yeah. I hope she, I hope she recovers. Yeah, I'd love to, love to see her next season. She seemed great. All right, then. Well, I'm going to let you guys deliberate. Uh, for about five minutes. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. So, sounds good. Sounds good. And of course, uh, just to clarify, Quentin will be accompanying you as the assistant to the assistant producer. Uh, all right, cool, cool. So, gonna go with no on the multi trucks. Just don't think we could ever get that out of the ship. Marking Vex as no. Right. Right. So, uh, definitely a big probably yes on the, on a critic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, yeah, just, like him. Yes. Like you said, got a, got a good, gritty, weird, sketchy vibe. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what we're going for here. Um, mm-hmm. I mean. Well, we only really he, had one medic, except for that. And I don't think that the, uh, I really liked Really, really like that Sheeran. It's a, it's a real shame. All right, but I guess we'll probably have to go with Amu because uh, someone needs to keep my guts on my inside. That's true. And worst case scenario, we can just use that giant shell for cover. Mm, mm-hmm, Ma- mm-hmm. Marking Amu as yes. Uh, and, what do you, uh, what, do you think we can make the brain work? The other brain. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I really like them. I mean, if we're going for like a heel angle here, you can't get better than that guy. But it seems like he's going to be redundant. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Probably. I mean, uh, you know, a second pilot also somewhat redundant. But, you know, I mean, we probably don't have to pay the android much because, you know. Yeah, but you know what? If it gets to it, 
you're, we're going to need you on guns. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Much rather be firing guns than f- flying, honestly. Yeah. Guns are always more fun. Yeah, this way you don't have to think about it, and he can worry about it. And uh, yeah, I'd say, I'd say, yeah, on the Android. All right. All Parking right. 785-727-1939-808 as yes. But we we got the budget for all this, right, Crystal? Uh, yeah, you should be able to fit uh, six of you on the ship that's been donated. Do- donated? Oh, yes. Yeah. You've got uh, an unusual situation. Uh, it'll all be explained later. But uh, yeah, your your team has a has a patron uh, on the drifter circuit. And they've donated uh, a small ship. I'd say six is a good number. All right. Well, that that's if we count uh, Quentin here. That's 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 six of us. Yeah, six is correct. And as a bonus, uh, both Skritic and uh, five minute Quentin timer. don't take oh. up that much room. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and send out the summons for the ones you mentioned, and we can finalize this before we send you off to your ship. All right. Thanks for uh, for setting this up. Oh, of course, of course. And uh, Crystal's just typing away at the data pad. Her homage uh, clothing has changed to look like uh, a starfield with a uh, supernova exploding. Wow. Oh, you like this? This is the latest of Mirage illusory clothing. Very, yeah, it's uh, very uh, stylish. Yeah, it's distracting. Thank you. And uh, shortly thereafter, uh, the four or excuse me, the three people who are not currently in the room all get pings on their personal comm links, uh, notifying them that they have been selected for Team Lizard Brain uh, for the latest in Extreme Infosphere Productions presents Drifters. A division of Omnicore. It's too late to argue now. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray. I think, we'll, I think we'll stop there. I think that's a good introduction to all of the characters and uh, kind of what the situation is. I mean, we kind of know what the game show is about. Lots of money, uh, some interesting characters. Will they survive? Will they make the cut? Will they have to phone a friend? We'll have to find out next week when another episode of Drifters appears right here on this podcast channel. Uh, Until then, here's hoping all of your dice rolls are critical hits. This podcast is copyright 2020 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.